All right, so far with our animation, we have figured out our rough storyboard. We've done an animatic kind of showing us the main steps. Now we just need to make that animatic look a lot better. So when I look at my files, I have a few different, I'll set them as a list so you can see the names. I have a few different PSD files. I have one that's the storyboard. I leave that as is. That's done. I have one that's the assets. This is the one I'm going to mark yellow because this is the one I'm going to be working on today. I'm going to go ahead and open that one up. And then I have one, I'm going to have one that's called stage. That's a copy of the assets one, but cleaned out just for the finished frames. So why is the assets important to look at? This is where we're going to be building up all of the, the tools that build our frames. So it's important, we took this from our animation one. And if I look at the timeline, it should be empty, right? Because you have to have an empty timeline in order to modify layers. I also have an animated storyboard PSD, right? That's if, and an animatic PSD. These are all in the past now. <laughs> you know, now we're creating the actual animation. So to build the assets, we have the idea for it. We have to think of that metaphor of the nightmare before Christmas and that stop motion process where you're fabricating. You know, if we were doing a 3D stop motion animation, we would have to make all of the models, make all of the sets, make all of the different heads before we could put them together into the scene and then shoot a frame, a final frame, right? So we have to create all of our puppets, basically. That's what assets is all about. So to do that, I'm going to find where these assets come from, starting with my first keyframe. So my first keyframe is hmm, why is it only showing that one? My first keyframe is, should be at the top. Ah, if it doesn't show up, you have to check the opacity. So it's, it's kind of interesting. This is how the timeline works. It, it programs the eyeball, but it also programs the opacity and it also programs the layer styles on it. So one way of turning the eyeball off is for the timeline to turn off the opacity to 100% to 0%, but it's there, right? So I'm just gonna work slowly on this building up the frames from my first frame, like my first page of my flipbook. I have them marked purple so that anything I build on top of this, I know when I'm working on the next frame. So what are the, the assets I need for this? I need to actually use my landscape or aspects of it or new things I found in order to make up this kind of jungle, fern, simple landscape. So to build those assets, there's lots of ways I can do it. I'm actually going to not use my, my landscape because I'm going to use my creature, though you can, use your, you can use multiple of your past projects. But I'm just going to do a Google image search. And I'm just going to look for jungle brush with ferns. See what I get. Remember the example of Space Jam, you can mix styles with your animation, you can play with all kinds of different things, and it's up to you how much you want to worry about lighting and shadows and all of those things we did with our first proving ground. I can limit it to large, because even though we're only doing um, 8 by 8 inches by one, 100 pixels per inch, larger is better than too small. And I'm just looking for a very straightforward kind of setting where I can grow my creature out of a fern. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, there's a nice... 
I think maybe the first kind of digital creature scapes I saw as a kid were like dinosaur art things, right? Imagining what it looked like. So this is kind of a fun stylistic template to follow. So this has watermarks all over it. Lame. This one's pretty good, but it's only uh, 600 by 300. I want it to be around 800. If I'm doing 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. So what am I going to do? I'm going to abandon Photoshop and instead use my good old Pixabay. Pixabay has the added benefit of not having to worry about the, uh, the rights. And I know that these are all vetted, not watermarked, nice and sharp, kind of like this dark one. Open that in a new tab. Good. And I don't want you to try to be too perfectionist in this. We are learning as we go. I'm actually going to download the slightly smaller one, the 1920 by 870. As long as it's 800 pixels, that's what we need. Okay, now it depends on how picky you are. I want to fill my box with this frame. So I bring this in, and it comes in as a smart object. I dragged and dropped for my downloads. I can hold down Option and grow it from the middle. And then I can actually pan it. I'm not going to crop it. I'm going to find, there we go, a nice background. And then I can rasterize it. And I can just adjust it a little bit. So maybe I want to play with the colors. You do this as you set up. This is like kind of painting your set. You can play with its saturation and kind of lighten it a bit. So let's go right to image adjustment levels. Brighten the highlights. Add some more depth. Then I want to bring out some of the reds in it. Adjustment color balance. In the midtones, shift it towards magenta, a little towards red, a little towards yellow, maybe a little less magenta. Highlights a little bit. Towards cyan. And the shadow is a little bit towards blue. All right, I like that kind of dappled light now coming from the background. Remember, adjustments, all these compositing tools, they help a lot. It was like this. Now it's like this. It's going to help show off my creature a lot more. Okay, I think I need another element, though. So I'm going to go back to Pixabay, and I'm going to search for... Fern. I need the fern that's going to grow my creature. I'm going to spit it out. This one's already cut out. That's nice. If I don't want so many illustration examples, I can change it to just photos. But there's no reason you couldn't use both together for this. Come on. There we go. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one because it saves me time cutting it out. I'm going to download it. I don't need it all that large. In fact, I might even do the smallest one, 640 by 640. Because we're understanding resolution now. We're working within an 800 by 800 
pixels square for our animation. That downloads faster, it will process faster. It's a PNG, which means when I drop it on, just like our creatures, it's already cut out. There we go. I can just place it here. And we've got a setting. Now there are some tricks I can play with. Its colors don't quite match, right? So I can rasterize it. Right click, rasterize. Remember, whenever you bring in something from the outside, it will come in as a smart object. You have to rasterize it before it will allow you to erase from it because it's referring out to that other file, which is going to help us later on. But right now we need to get around. I'm just going to adjust its levels. And actually, it's not about making this really believable. It's about making this stand out as kind of the character in the scene. So I'm going to give it a little bit more brightness, a lot more brightness. And I'm going to play with its coloring just a little bit to push it a little bit more in line. But this is like a back a backdrop in a photo studio and then this is the actual like prop that my character is going to use. And the reason you want to set these adjustments early on is you're going to be duplicating these things a lot. And using them kind of over and over again. So if you decide you wanted to change kind of the color at the end, that's a whole lot of work for all the different times we're going to duplicate these elements. I can even do things like distort it, warp it a little bit. I don't like how that edge is hanging off. So I'm just going to push it a little. Stretch it. Make this work. Okay, you can see the resolution of it. We can actually see the pixels. And we're working within this space, you can always check under image size, of 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels per inch. I'll go ahead and lock it. So we are now building assets that are at the right resolution. Another thing I can do is I can right click on the layer itself or double click on the layer itself and get layer styles. And if I want to light this in a more dramatic way, I might do something like an outer glow around it. And then I can adjust those settings, take that opacity down that's a little strong. I can make it a little noisier. I could spread it a little bit. It's actually better to spread it with size that will soften it. And then I can take its opacity down. So it's just got some kind of dewiness behind it. And what's great is that's linked to the effect. I can animate those effects as well as the layer itself, as the pixels. And I can turn them off and on. So lots we can do. OK, I think this matches the intentions of my first frame, just to establish the jungle and the character of the fern. Good, that's done. Now I can take those. I'm going to hold down Command, select both of them, duplicate them, Command J, and move the duplicates down underneath, and then put all of these. Well, I'm actually not going to group them. I'm just going to turn them off. Okay, so now I'm on to the next frame. The next frame looks like, I'm going to take it up to 100% <laughs> in opacity, that the fern starts to move. So to do this, what do I need? I need to duplicate the fern again, and then I want to uh, puppet warp it. So I go to Edit, Puppet Warp. I'm going to lock the bottom. It's going to lock it at the corners. Lock it at the base. And then give me some corners I can animate from. 
and that 